Leave It to Beaver. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hugh Beaumont. Tony Dow. And Jerry Mathers as the beaver. you, honey. All right. I'll tell him you call, Richard. Bye. The uh, front door was open. I opened it for you, and then the <laughs> phone rang. Oh. Well, thanks. Did you have a nice day at the office? Oh, perfect. Everything went smooth as clockwork. Did it really? Uh, no, but I'm trying a new approach. <laughs> you see, I figured that if I came home every night and said, everything was great today, Pretty soon, I'd start thinking it was great. How's it working? I don't know. This is the first time I've tried it. Uh, was Richard asking for Beaver on the phone? Uh-uh. It was Whitey. I know it was because he said he was Richard. He always says he's Richard. Well, uh, who does Richard say he is? Oh, he always says he's Gilbert. Well, why do they do that? Well, because if there's something wrong, they'd uh, rather have us yell at somebody else. <laughs> Where's Beaver? Well, he and Wally left about an hour ago. They said they were going to go over to Eddie Haskell's house to pick something up. Oh, I hope Eddie isn't selling Wally another one of those big bargains like that uh, walkie-talkie that wouldn't work. No, I don't think Eddie is selling Wally anything this time. Oh, oh fine. Now, this time he's selling Beaver something. Uh, what makes you say that? Well, because Beaver said if it was a good hunk of junk, Wally could help him carry it home. But if it was a bad hunk of junk, Wally could make Eddie give Beaver back his money. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing like having a big brother around when you made a bad bargain. I remember the year my brother went away to boarding school. Every time he came home on vacation, I'd have a long list of guys for him to punch. Did he do it for you? Yeah, the first two or three times. After that, he got interested in girls, and I had to start being nice to the big guys. Honey, the sink is stopped up. <laughs> on the workbench, Steve. Boy, must have been a mile and a half from Eddie's house. We should have waited till Dad got home and let him lug it back here in the car. <laughs> you know, I remember when Eddie built this thing. He got the steering gear out of a store and everything. How'd he get wrecked up like this? Well, a couple, three years ago, he took the wheels off and was going to convert it into an ice boat and sail it on the river. <laughs> then one night, his pop came home and ran over the thing. By accident? Well, Eddie said he did it on purpose. He was pretty sore at his dad. He said he did it to keep him from getting killed on the river. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Oh, hi, Dad. Hey, your mother's looking for you. It's getting close to supper. Why, no, Dad. I was just helping Beave lug this thing back from Eddie's. Pretty neat, huh, Dad? Well, Beaver, that depends. I, uh... I hope you didn't get taken here. Oh, gee, no, Dad. I'm only paying them 25 cents a week. Well, yeah, but uh, for how long? Uh, gee, I don't know. How long was it, Wally? Eight weeks. You're only paying him $2. Oh. Well, what do you think, Dad? Well, I think it's worth at least $2, Beaver. But I want you to fix this up now. I don't want this to end up like that old bicycle you bought. It was around here for months without any tires on it, and we finally had to throw it away. Oh, gee, no, Dad. Wally's going to help me with this. We're going to put wheels on it and fix the steering gear and everything. Yeah, Dad. 
I thought it'd be good practice if I worked on it. You know, for when I get a car of my own. Wally, I told you I'd let you have a car someday, and I meant it. You don't have to keep hinting. Well, sure, Dad, but I just wanted to remind you that you said it and that you meant it, so that when I get old enough to have a car, you won't say, well, this is the first time I heard of this. Uh, well, shall we go into supper now? <laughs> certainly slept late this morning. I was beat. I had a hard day at the office yesterday. What happened to your philosophy? Why didn't you say you had a wonderful day and you weren't tired? Well, you know, I tried that. That's what kept me awake half the night, talking to myself. You know, you used to sleep better when you were miserable. <laughs> What's all that hammering out in the garage? Oh, the boys are working on that coaster wagon of the beavers. Oh, is Wally helping? Uh-huh. And you know, it's good to see the two of them doing something together again. Yeah, kind of like old times, having them work on a project. I can remember when they had time for each other. They were always going off fishing or camping or hiking or building a model. It's a pity they have to grow apart. Yeah. From being the best friends you have in the world, a brother becomes just someone you exchange presents with at Christmas time. <laughs> You know, it's a shame we can't convince our children that they should enjoy each other while they can. Yeah. Well, I guess today, with kids joining so many clubs and athletic groups, it's easier to make new friends to fight with. <laughs> well, coffee hot? Uh-huh. I'll get you breakfast. You know something, Wally? What's that, B? You look a lot better when you got dirt on you. <laughs> what are you driving at? Well, since you started getting grown up and hanging around with girls, well, you're so neat, you're a mess. <laughs> yeah, well, fooling around like this is still fun. Yeah, too bad a guy can't stay a kid all his life. Well, gee, Beaver, growing up's rough on a guy. You gotta wait till you're an old man to act like a kid again. <laughs> then you can go to parties and wear funny hats like Mr. Rutherford does. <laughs> Gee, Beaver, I never want to get old enough to act like that. There. Well, we're all set to put the wheels on, Beef. Did you get any yet? Nah. I went to the junkyard yesterday, but they were fresh out of wheels. When I told the guys I was going to build a coaster, everybody started building coasters. Beaver, you should have known enough to keep your mouth shut. Yeah, I know. Well, but when the guys start talking like big shots, I want to be a big shot, too and always end up saying something I shouldn't have said. Yeah. Don't you know any kids that have wheels? Hey, yeah, one kid. What kid? Well, Penny Woods. Well, well, she's got this old doll buggy, and she said I could have the wheels off that. Hey, Penny Woods, isn't that the girl in your class who's so creepy? Yeah, but she doesn't seem so creepy since I found out she's got wheels. <laughs> Wally, would you tell your brother that lunch will be ready soon? Well, he's not around, Mom. He just took off. Well, where'd he go? Over to Penny Woods' house. Beaver calling on a girl? Well, that's cute. <laughs> oh, it's not what you think, Mom. Oh, he isn't? No, he's just interested in her four wheels. <laughs> Yes, little boy? Uh, uh could I please speak to Penny? Oh, why, of course. Come in. Have a chair. Sit down. Yoo-hoo, Penny. There's a little gentleman here to see you. <laughs> Oh. Hi, Beaver. Hi, Penny. Uh, well, um, I'll see what we have in the way of refreshments for your little guest, dear. He's not a guest, Mom. He's just the Beaver. Well, uh, suppose we treat him as a guest. I'm sure he won't mind. Will you, son? 
Oh, no, ma'am. I won't mind. <laughs> My mother said it was a gentleman, but it's only you. <laughs> yeah. Well, my mom makes jokes like that, too. <laughs> How come you want to see me? Well, uh, I just saw you yesterday at school. You made a face at me. <laughs> Gee, Penny, everybody makes faces at you. <laughs> well, what do you want? Uh, could I have the wheels off your old doll buggy? Oh, that's why you came over for. Sure, what else? <laughs> I thought you might be getting creepy. <laughs> okay, come on out in the garage. Well, what about the refreshments your mom's getting? We can drink them outside. That's good, because I get nervous drinking junk in strange living rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Penny, they're okay. I thought you wanted to give them to me on account of they were busted. You can have them for keeps, too. Gee, thanks, Penny. You're real neat. <laughs> well, I mean, for a girl, you're sort of neat. <laughs> Look, there's just one thing. Don't tell anybody. Because if the girls at school find out I gave something to a boy, they'll never speak to me. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Penny. I don't want to get the business from the guys, either. <laughs> hey, did you hear that? My stomach rumbled. <laughs> My mother said we shouldn't talk about things like that in mixed company. <laughs> Gee, Penny, there's nobody here but us. Oh, Beaver not home yet? Not yet. I've been waiting lunch on him. Well, if he can't wangle something to eat out of a lady friend, he doesn't have the old cleaver touch. <laughs> the master speaks. I remember you had quite a knack of dropping by just at mealtime. I was just a growing boy. You know, I once remember overhearing my mother say to my father, do you think that ward boy is serious about June? And my father said, well, if the time ever comes that he looks at her the way he looks at one of your pot roasts, then we'll know. <laughs> I guess I didn't really get that pot roast feeling till I was in the Navy. <laughs> Boy, that beaver. What's the matter? He went over to Penny's house without any tools. Well, maybe he can borrow a wrench over there. Well, if he can't, he's sure gonna be in a mess. What do you mean, Wally? Gee, Mom, I'm a grown kid pushing the doll carriage down the street. <laughs> the only thing worse that could happen to him would be that if he got caught in his underwear. <laughs> doesn't have any tools? No, they're all locked up. Because every time my big brother uses them, he breaks them. <laughs> Boy, they sure got these wheels on good for a doll carriage. You can just push it home, Beaver. I don't need the rest of it. Gee, thanks, Penny. But don't you need it for when you play dolls? I don't play with dolls anymore. I go on horse shows. Oh. Well, thanks for the neat wheels. Penny, is your little friend staying for lunch? No, Mom. My little friend's going home. <laughs> so long, Beaver. So long, Penny. And thanks for the neat refreshment, Mrs. Woods. You're welcome. Very nice boy. He's cute, too. Don't you think so? Yeah, but it's kind of hard to think of him as cute. Because up to now, I've been thinking of him as a little rat. <laughs> oh. oh, he has. OK, well, uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Woods. Boy, Mom, Beaver left 15 minutes ago pushing a dog buggy down the street. I better go find him. But your lunch is ready. Gee, Mom, Beaver pushing a doll buggy, some wise guy's liable to clobber him. <laughs> now, why would anyone pick on a boy just because he's pushing a doll buggy? Well, gee, Mom, guys always pick on someone that's different. Don't you remember how it was when you were a kid? <laughs> Maybe you better go and look for him. <laughs> remember? 
remember how it was. My mother made me wear hair ribbons. Boy, Beaver pushing a dog buggy down the street. A thing like this could put a curse on the whole family. <laughs> I can remember when boys played with coasters and bikes. Ed, we're really in trouble with this younger generation. You got sissy on us. How do you do, Mrs. Cleaver? Oh, hello, Eddie. Uh, it's quite a pleasant afternoon out, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes, it is. I, I suppose you want to see Wally. Uh, yes. Uh, that is, if it won't inconvenience you too much to call him for me. Well, it won't inconvenience me at all, but he's out looking for the beaver. The little fellow been misbehaving? No, he hasn't, Eddie. He went over to Penny's house to get some wheels for his coaster, and Wally was worried about him because he's pushing Penny's dog carriage home. Oh, that is a matter of concern. I certainly hope no one slaughters the little fellow. Eddie, would you like to wait up in Wally's room? No, thank you, Mrs. Cleaver. I believe I'll go out and look for Theodore. And Wally, of course. Thank you, Mrs. Cleaver. You're welcome. Beaver! Hey, Beaver! <laughs> Do you have your dolly in there? <laughs> beaver! Hey, Beaver! Ward, when you were young, if you'd seen a little boy walking down the street pushing a baby carriage, what would you have done? What would I have done? Well, I'd have clobbered him, of course. <laughs> oh, dear. Clobberty. Eddie said he'd probably get slaughtered. <laughs> Ward, do you think that might happen to Beaver if someone sees him pushing that dog carriage? Well, if the boy's bigger than Beaver, or if there are two of them, uh, yes, I'd say that's about the way to turn out. <laughs> then what'll happen? Well, then Beaver will never push a dog carriage along the street again. <laughs> oh, come on, dear. Don't worry about it. Everything will be all right. I can't help but worry about it. What if Beaver gets in a fight with some big boy? Well, why not look on the bright side of it? Maybe you'll get in a fight with some little boy, and uh, <laughs> then he'll clobber him. <laughs> Hi, Beef. Hi, Gilbert. Hi, Richard. What are you doing around here, Beef? Oh, well, uh, just messing around. Yeah, that's what us two guys are doing, too. Well, why don't you guys go over to the park and mess around? Yeah, that's no good. Hey, guys! Look what I found! Hey, a doll buggy! Yeah, with four neat wheels. Uh, <laughs> maybe I ought to put it back, Gilbert. Why should I? Well, maybe it belongs to some girl. <laughs> Why would a girl leave it down there? Well, maybe it belongs to somebody else. What kind of somebody else? <laughs> well, maybe it belongs to a guy. What would a guy be doing with a doll carriage? <laughs> a goofy beaver? Yeah, you goofy beef. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take it home. This is just what my father needs. Father? Yeah, he can use the four neat wheels for the coaster he's building for me. <laughs> Hey, Beaver, is there something the matter with you? What do you mean? You don't look so good. You look like you did that time Harry Harrison showed you where they took out his appendix. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't feel too good now, either. 
Hey, guys. I think I know who it belongs to. Yeah, who? No. I guess I don't. <laughs> Come on, Mitch. Let's go. Beaver! Beaver! Hey, Beaver! Did you find him, Eddie? No, but I'll tell you something. I'd give him back his two bucks just to see it. <laughs> Cut it out, Eddie. Well, look, Sam. This is the chance of a lifetime. Your moon-faced little brother coming down the street pushing a doll carriage. Man! <laughs> hey, here he comes, without the buggy. Yeah. Hey, look, leave him alone, huh, Eddie? He looks kind of beat. You don't have to tell Big Daddy. I'm all heart. <laughs> hi, Beef. Hi, Wally. Hi, Eddie. Hey, hey what happened to the doll carriage? Oh, I threw it away and some other guys found it. Well, look, Beaver. Didn't you know you'd look like a little creep pushing a girl's doll buggy down the street? <laughs> nah. You never know you're gonna look like a creep until after you look like a creep. <laughs> hey, Beef, who got the doll carriage away from you? Ah, oh, that Gilbert and Richard. Look, Beef, you want me and Wally to go over there and take it away from them? Nah. I wouldn't want anybody to know the girl's doll carriage belonged to me. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Yeah. You know something, Wally? I sort of know how he feels. You do, Eddie. Yeah. When I was a little kid in kindergarten, we had a woman taking care of me. She sent me to school with a home permanent. <laughs> Boy, Eddie, what happened? Well, I told my father about it, and he made a great big joke. You know something? I don't think I've ever really told him anything since then. <laughs> Gee, Eddie, then how come you're always jumping on other guys, making fun of them? Well, look, Sam, if you can make the other guy feel like a goon first, then you don't feel like so much of a goon. Uh, I don't get that. Of course you don't. That's because you never went to kindergarten with a home permanent. <laughs> you know something, Eddie? It's holding up real good. <laughs> Where are the boys? They're out in the garage. We went out to the hobby shop to get some wheels for Beaver's coaster. We had to stop a couple of places before we could find the right ones. Oh, is he all right now? Yeah, he's forgotten all about the baby buggy. You know, honey, I was thinking, Beaver being so embarrassed about pushing that doll buggy, wouldn't it be nice if we could teach our children to be above that? Oh, I don't know, Jim. I don't think we ever get above being laughed at. Yes, I guess we've all had something to be embarrassed about. Hair ribbons or... Or a little red velvet jacket. <laughs> oh, Ward. You never wore a little red velvet jacket. Sure did. A great aunt sent it to me. My mother made me wear it at Sunday school. <laughs> Get clobbered? Yep. I had one thing working for me, though. It was red and the blood didn't show. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, would you tell the boys to get ready for supper? Oh, I'll let them work a little while longer. After all, it'll only be a few more years till all they do is send each other cards at Christmas. Hi, Beaver. Hi, Gilbert. Hey, your car's pretty neat. Yeah? Well, your car's still neater than mine. Yeah, but yours is pretty neat anyways. <laughs> Uh-oh, Beaver, look who's coming. Hey, let's duck in the house. I don't want to meet that dopey Penny. Well, gee, Gilbert, she's not so bad. What are you talking about, Beaver? She's a girl. <laughs> yeah, but for a girl, she's still not too bad. Boy, Beaver. Hi, Penny. Beaver, you rat. I heard you gave my buggy wheels to Gilbert. And I bet you sold them to him, too. <laughs> you creepy little spook, you. <laughs> Boy, Gilbert, I was just over at her house Saturday, and she was really friendly. It's your own fault, Beaver, for even talking to a girl. Yeah, I guess so. But you know something? I might try it again, someday. Boy, Beaver, you're going flaky. 